Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Nintendo Fuse's Industry Talk. I'm your host, Barry, and none of my colleagues could join us today, but that's okay because we have a very, very special guest joining me today, Mr. Kevin Mellot. Hey, how's it going, Barry? Uh, it's going great, and I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, now, people are probably saying, who are you? What makes yeah. you so special? And, and really, uh, why don't you tell everybody what it is, the main thing that you're doing right now that is blowing up a certain Nintendo community? Yeah, sure. Uh, so recently I started, um, well, I started developing this uh, several months back, but recently I started making and selling uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy Link cables uh, <laughs> through mainly Planet uh, Virtual Boy. Um, the story behind that is, I mean, lots of stories behind that. I, I'm doing several Virtual Boy projects at the time right now, but for that one, I had, um, you know, I had some of the, uh, well, I had Hyper Fighting, and I also uh, created the, made some 3D Battlesnake and Tic-Tac-Toe uh, cartridges for Virtual Boy, but had no way to play them. And like a lot of people, I was monitoring the thread on Planet Virtual Boy to uh, see when those would come out, and uh, I just got tired of waiting, so I decided to make them myself. Yeah, it's it's fascinating, and and I have one here. Um, this one I purchased from Kevin. That's it. Um, it is so simple, but it's almost impossible to recreate, and the quality um, is just amazing. Like the three D printing yeah, is, is is superb. Uh, now I don't know if you dealt with this or not, but I know I saw somewhere that there was a development unit uh, that contained an official Nintendo Link cable. Uh, and that was bought by somebody on Planet VB. Did you get your hands on that, or were you the one that purchased it? And I'm just ignorant. No, I didn't have that. I definitely saw that, the VIEW 004 cable. Um, the current design is modeled after pictures of that cable. Um, uh, I just went in. We basically took the pictures of that cable and also the pictures of the previous development of this cable that took place um, and just started designing our own. Uh, also, somewhat modeled the cover of the connector um, after the controller cover, and then uh, kind of went from there. That version that you have is the fifth iteration of the design of the connector. Um, yep, the cover is not wasn't too difficult to make. Uh, there's some minor tweaks there, but that center piece is really important because there's a lot of thin walls. Uh, so we had to do a few iterations on that, but it's print 3D printed. Although the uh, the surface came out pretty nice, um, it's three D printed in a material called Onyx from uh, Mark Forged. Uh, they make the three D printer, and uh, it's uh, carbon infused um, nylon, so it's a three D printed carbon fiber connector. The um, you know the the quality on this is very much. Uh, professional grade like this is something where if you were to go to the store and you were to buy a link cable for your Game Boy or your Game Boy Color your Game Boy Advance back in the day uh, you would get something like this and uh, nice. what's fascinating about the virtual boy link cable is that it was always intended to be made um, Mm -hmm. Now, the, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know, maybe some of our listeners don't know, um, the Virtual Boy was rushed to market when the N64 was delayed. It, it, the design we have isn't even the true final design it was supposed to have. Uh, okay. And uh, it was always intended to have the link cable, which is why it's built in. Um, but since they rushed it to market, they had to uh, kind of forego it. They just okay. needed something in 95. Uh, and that's why one of the games that does work with it is Mario Tennis, which may come as a shock to people. Uh, yeah. Mario Tennis originally was supposed to be a two-player game, which makes sense if you think about it. I mean, yeah, it uh, Tetris built in with the Game Boy, you know, is a two-player game, and it sold billions because of that. Well, not billions, but, you know, a lot. Yeah. And they had to hide away those features so that people weren't confused. And recently, they were brought back. Um, and yep. Kevin, you you make these wonderful cartridges here. This is Mario's Tennis with the two players restored, so you can finally play the game as it was always intended by Nintendo back in '95. Yeah, I have made a few of those carts now. Um, it was kind of interesting timing uh, that that got released right after I started shipping cables. So I mean, 
made another major title. And like you say, I mean, that particular game, uh, even my daughter, 14 year old teenager, who's never knew what Virtual Boy was, is now asked me to play uh, two player on that. So it, it's funny. It's it's interesting. I, I grew up with the Virtual Boy. Uh, when it came out, I was 13 years old. Uh, I remember the commercials. I remember wanting one. I finally remember getting one. And I always yeah. wanted to play with my friends. I was like, oh, come on, you know, because I actually was one of the few not only to have a Virtual Boy, but to have a friend with one as well. And okay, that's nice. something we, we always wanted to do. And uh -huh. 22 years later, here we are. And now it's possible, which is mind blowing, uh, at least for me. Because uh, it's like a childhood dream come true. Although I know many people say that's a sad childhood dream, but it sometimes it's oh, a simple thing. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I used to look at them inside Circuit Cities here in Southern California, but my parents, I, I could never get my hands on one, so I didn't have one until I was in my twenties. And I don't know. I always find myself coming back to it for some reason. So there's yeah. a special charm to the Virtual Boy. Um, yeah, it's a fun system. It, it is a really unique system. None of the games have ever been brought to any other platform. I mean, I, Panic Bomber has been on others, but I mean, like, not the Virtual Boy version. Um, now, what's interesting is, for those that don't know, Virtual Boy had only 14 US releases. It had uh, up to 22, counting the Japanese. But the homebrew community for Virtual Boy is huge. Uh, and, and there's a ton of great exclusive games that are being made, and some of them now have these two-player capabilities. Uh, you mentioned Tic-Tac-Toe and, and 3D Battlesnake. Um, yep. Did you talk with the people who are working on this at all? Like, are those those two games? Uh, those have been out for quite some time, actually, and I think um, I only know the screen name, Dog P over at Planet uh, Virtual Boy. I think he created those right after... Uh, he did some of the original link cable development, and he was the one uh, originally started that link cable thread. Um, and he made those, but I could never play them. So it's kind of behind the motivation of why I should make, you know, this cable because I want to be able to try some of these last cards that that I wasn't able to try. Yeah, yeah. Those, those. I think they're only two player games. If I, how many exactly. Yeah, they're only exactly. Oh, it's kind of weird. They developed a two-player only game for a system that didn't even have a link cable at the time. Um, yeah, there's. Well, you can see on Planet Virtual Boy, some guys are you know making them themselves, and you can, you can put together some crude. I don't want to say crude. Those people worked hard on those cables, but you can put together some cables and make it work if you if you're really motivated to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just the fact that that this has been restored. Um, to the function and, and the other big the big game you mentioned it. Um, I know it's actually been one of the few virtual boy games to actually get more mainstream news. Uh, I know a couple years ago Bound High uh, was big because that was an unreleased Nintendo game that that got found. Um, yeah. but the other one is Hyper Fighting. Uh, now Hyper Fighting, for those that don't know, looks pretty similar to to another game you may know, um, but it was a custom made game. Uh, by a, a member of Planet Virtual Boy who commissioned it. And it not only is a full, fantastic single-player game, it also uses the link capabilities to yeah. to a great extent. Yep. Yeah, that's a great... I mean, that's... Well, until Mario Tennis released just a couple of weeks ago, that, that was the real, real only game to want to need to use the link cable. So, yeah, it's exciting that now there's a second title. Yeah, now for those that don't know, this this is just one of the examples of the homebrew community that the Virtual Boy is doing, that, that Kevin here is a part of, and that they are just producing some incredible, incredible titles. In fact, what's interesting about Hyper Fighting, um, on, you know, besides the fact that it uses the link cable, besides the fact that it is a, a fully done, professional quality uh, game that is, you know, a homebrew is the fact that it doesn't fit on a standard Virtual Boy uh, ROM. Yeah. It actually needs a custom built bigger ROM. I think 32 yeah. meg, right? 32 meg is the minimum size, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show you the potential that the Virtual Boy has that Nintendo never even got to tap into, that the homebrew community is now able to tap into. And technically, the sky's the limits. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll, you know, I know I know somebody's trying to do Snatcher, uh, which is just really interesting. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll see, you know, Metal Gear Solid. Maybe we'll see Ocarina of Time, you know? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. 
I mean, I hope this cable and a lot of other developments that are seem to be going on right now will, will spur a lot more development for, for Virtual Boy. I mean, the homebrew community is is great. The games they produce, I think I have just as many homebrew games in it as I do originals. Maybe even more now, actually. That I think I'm in the same boat. Uh, I know there's a Mario Kart demo, or, or they're trying to do Mario Kart. I mean, I would love to yeah. see that or, or Smash Brothers kind of deal uh, using the link cable. That would be nice, yeah. Now, I don't know if you remember this. This is this is going back to the Game Boy days. Um, Nintendo released a game called F1 Race, and it came bundled with a four-player link cable for the original Game Boy. Uh, oh, do you remember nice. that? I don't. I actually... Uh... I mean, my brother and I had Game Boys, and we, we played, but we never tried to do any Link Cable, or I can't remember the last one I played. I keep thinking of Spider-Man, but that wasn't a very good game. <laughs> I think that was an LJN game, actually. So there you go. <laughs> no, but the uh, what it was is it was like a, a square uh, for the four-player, and you plugged your Link Cable into w one side of the square, and thus okay. each side of the square had a port. So four Game Boys were able to link, uh, nice. and they they since did did other things like with the I think the Game Boy Advance had like that kind of square in the middle of the cable so you can kind of just link in uh, okay. without the need of a special adapter. But would it be possible to to make something for four player Virtual Boy games? Not that that's going to be a commonplace thing, but it would be if, interesting. Yeah, I mean. Technically, the system, I, I don't see why not. You'd have to have a game written to support it. Um, I do have another project. Actually, the cart's already developed, but I have a 128 megabit cartridge um, that can also house a 256. Um, and you could write whatever game fits on there. I mean, that's much larger than the hyper fighting ROM even. Um, it's a little smaller on the RAM side right now, but I'm looking to expand that so that Basically, it'll it'll be a cart that maxes out everything the Virtual Boy can actually access. So, 128 expansion, ROM, as well as RAM. Um, so, that'll be you know whatever you can fit on that. That'll add a lot more capability. And a, a multiplayer uh, cable is is something that could be potential in the future. See, that's incredible because like I mean, you think about the Super Nintendo. They had the Super FX chip and other chips like that, and the Mario RPG uh, that would actually enhance the power of the Super Nintendo. You're doing mm -hmm. the same thing for the Virtual Boy, which is just incredible. Yeah, trying to expand, you know, because there's a lot of talk about the homebrew games that some of that are limited just because of the the memory space. So, well, why not just create a cart and I originally was creating some cartridges, actually, um, so I could make my own uh, copy of Hyper Fighting. Um, and I decided, well, why not max it out so that I don't have to spin this again? Um, didn't max out the RAM, because uh, at that time, I, I I didn't have the particular chip that I wanted. But uh, I, I found one of those now, so I'll update that. And then, um, yeah, there's a lot of developers, or at least on the Planet BB um, website, there's developers on there that are very excited about that new larger cartridge. Oh God, that that that's news to me. I mean, that's amazing. Just just thinking what could what could possibly be put on there, and what what could the minds that came up with some of the games already be doing? Uh, I mean, sh wow, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. There's um, Go on. there's. There's one two-player game already in progress. I there's no timeline or anything I can get as far as when it'll be out, but um, whether it'll need that larger card or not, uh, I, I don't know yet. But it, it's in progress. So more stuff's coming from those guys, which is which is awesome. Can you speak any about the projects that are currently in the works? Uh, I can't. Uh, I can just say that there's a two-player one coming, just because that developer's posted. Um, and, and said that on Planet Virtual Boy, so you, you can find that information there. Um, there is some updates coming to some of the development tools as well to add the link cable, so I think you'll see some more multiplayer games come in the future. Oh, I, I see. You know, it's like that secretive. It's like, oh, I want to know, I want to know. <laughs> I understand. I mean, it's uh, one of those it, things. Go on. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know that I have permission to divulge <laughs> so I'll, I'll hold on to it for now. That, that don't want to get you in trouble. And, and for those that have played a Virtual Boy, um, you know, if you play Mario Tennis or Mario Clash or Wario Land, you, you know that it's it's capable. 
Um, but if you play hyper fighting, you can like it just starts to open your eyes like, wow, this machine can do all this. Now what you're saying with this new cart, I mean, who knows? Yeah, I hope so. So I hope you're working with, with the guy doing Snatcher because I think that'd be amazing getting a full game of Snatcher on the on the Virtual Boy. Yeah, it'd be exciting to see that. There's definitely more room on that cart to, to house that kind of game. So now what would something like that cost? I mean, obviously, I know I know hyper fighting costs more because it is a custom board. Um, are we talking like here it is your snatcher? Uh, you know, you don't want to pay three hundred dollars for the Sega CD version. You could buy the Virtual Boy version, but because it's special cart, it's going to cost you around six hundred dollars. Yeah. You know. I don't think it's going to be a six hundred dollar realm. I mean, I think the target. I can't say. You know, I'm not the developer doing that game, but I'm, I'm guessing. An example. Yeah, I'm guessing it'll be similar to some of the original CIB releases that homebrew guys were doing. Um, if you do the carts in larger volumes, um, and I'm larger volumes, I'm talking about homebrew volumes, like hundreds, um, they come down quite a bit. So um, well, that's good. I, I don't think the price will explode. Now, I know uh, originally with the earlier homebrews, a lot of it was cannibalized carts. Uh, Virtual League Baseball was, I think, number one uh, cannibalized uh, game. Uh, these yeah. ones that you have here that you make, are these custom or are these cannibalized? Uh, those are donor carts, so yeah, I've cannibalized them. Um, I've done a little bit of work to try and recreate the cases uh, with the same type of material that the uh, link cable connectors are made out of, that Onyx material, as well as some other materials. Uh, they don't quite come out right, and even if you get a clean one come out of the print, um, it's, the price is high. I mean, you're talking like 30 bucks just for the case. And then I still need the connector, which you, no one's reproduced yet. Um, so it's still cheaper to get a donor card, unfortunately. But yeah, you end up you end up killing another BB game in order to do it. It's unfortunate because there's only so many before we run out. <laughs> yeah. It'd be nice to see some type of Kickstarter campaign or something to try and uh, mold and recreate the connector in the cases and then then we could do as many games as we wanted. That, that would be fantastic. Now, now, I had to ask, how did you get into this? Like, what made you say, hey, I want to develop a link cable. Hey, I want to start developing and, and publishing games uh, for the Virtual Boy. Yeah, sure. So, um, well, I, I've come, I've had a few Virtual Boys over the last 20 or so years. Um, like I mentioned, I, I didn't get one when I was a kid. So when I got older and had a little bit of my own money, I, I bought one. Um, but in this latest round, I just I got interested in games. To be honest, I, I don't remember why, just nostalgia, I'm guessing. Um, so I bought one, and then I was just looking at some of the current you know prices of say like Space Invaders for three to six hundred, or you know some of these other games like the, the some of the Japanese games that are trying to go for a thousand bucks, and I just thought why. Why, why does this memory cartridge need to cost that much money? Um, so I actually did purchase some of those uh, expensive ones at the beginning. The first one I did was Space Invaders, but uh, bought the game, uh, downloaded the ROM, and, and then made my own PCB, and then uh, made a clone of it uh, for myself just so I could have that, and then resold the originals. Um, because I really wanted to have those games, especially Space Invaders. I uh, my parents' first computer was an Apple IIc, and we used to play Space Invaders on it. That was the only reason I touched the computer at that age. Um, so I, I wanted to have that on Virtual Boy when I realized it was available, but I, I didn't want to pay those kind of prices. I, I don't blame you. I, I still don't have Space Invaders. I have a, I have a, a repro of Space Invaders, but I, I want the okay. original. You know, I don't have any of those, the bigger ones, you know, uh, Virtual Lab, Virtual Bowling, yeah. uh, SD Gundam. Like, I'd love those, but I, I look at the prices and I'm like, I could do a lot more with that money than throw it down on one game when yeah. I do have repros that I pay like 30 bucks for just to play. Yeah, exactly. So and that was the motivation behind that. I don't blame you there. I mean, especially if you have a game, you know, a 600 hour game or, or a thousand hour game with like virtual lab and, and virtual bowling. Do you really want to put it in and play? I mean, it's, it's, it's a thousand yeah. hours. I mean, it's almost like playing with fire. What if it damages it and you can yeah, get a $30 exactly. repro and <laughs> just play to your heart's content? Yeah, exactly. I'd be afraid to touch them. 
yeah that that's that's the big thing about that now with the with the link cable itself where were you there at the beginning like did, did was that one of your big draws to doing this outside of space invaders like just say hey you know what it'd be cool if we we find someone finally did it because people were trying and failing and trying and failing for about seven years or so uh, the push to do the link cable was, you know, as I, I, I created my copy of Space Invaders and I, I went to the other Japanese titles and, and started making copies of those for myself. Um, and then eventually started doing homebrews. Uh, I had to go to a little bigger chip size, but my cart design, um, it was a couple simple mods and I could go to a 16 megabit chip, which houses all the, the uh, homebrews except high providing. Um, and I built a lot of those. And then after that, I decided, you know what? Hyperfining is the only one I don't have. I really want it and I don't want to pay 750 for it. Uh, but in order to do that, I did have to pay 750 for it. And I, I kind of did the same thing I did with Space Invaders. I uh, bought a copy. I found one. It, it took a while to find someone to actually sell one to me. Um, and then I cloned that and made a copy for myself as well. And then the big glaring, you know, when you, Boot up uh, hyper fighting. It's the I forget third or fourth entry says versus, and I I could never play that. So uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and do the cable myself. Um, I was checking the Planet Virtual Boy thread, you know, on and off to see if they were finally going to come out, um, and it seemed like it wasn't going to happen. So I just I decided to try it myself. Yeah, yeah it, it I don't think it ever did. Uh, I was part of the uh, the original thread you know had my name down like hey i'm interested i'm interested and, and uh -huh. I, I didn't go to the site for a while and then i came back and i saw yours and people are like oh yeah i got it thanks i'm like what like when did this yeah. come out how did <laughs> i not know about this i was on that list and, yeah. and i was like oh my god you know like i've been waiting for this for so long finally somebody's done it and and it's so interesting because i think this is maybe the first example and i could be wrong that that somebody has has done or restored function to uh, you know, any publisher, especially Nintendo or manufacturer, I should say, uh, that, that was originally intended. Like, I, I don't okay. think any other console or handheld had an intended uh, thing that was, you know, not released. I mean, even the 64DD was released in Japan. I know, I think Super Nintendo might have had something else underneath it for, like, developments. But they, okay. they, they, there was stuff for it. It was never intended for the public. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's awesome to have it. And I mean, I got to thank a lot of the guys who did a lot of the groundwork before me as well um, through Planet Virtual Boy. I mean, a lot of the information and guys trying to kind of reverse engineer how that link works and, and the information to be able to create the cable and what the pinout was, was, was all uh, from Planet Virtual Boy. So I certainly couldn't have done it without them, um, but glad I could build some and, and get them out to people who have uh, who've been waiting a long time for them. yeah now no, I was part of the fourth batch for this um, okay. uh, how, how many uh, how many have you already produced for people of the uh, so I I built 33 cables so far um, I have another batch right now the parts are due uh, should come in this weekend but possibly Monday um, there'll be 53 cables when I'm done with this next batch um, I am gonna take a pause for a little bit uh, just to work on some other projects. They're, they're Virtual Boy related as well. Um, but uh, just want to take a little break from making cables. I haven't been able to do uh, a lot of work on those other projects. So I am going to come back to it. Um, I, I posted recently on Planet BB, okay, everything's sold out. I'm, I'm going to pause a little bit. And I, I've gotten some frantic emails about, please don't <laughs> crush my dreams. Um, <laughs> I promise I'm coming back to it. I, j I just need about a month or so to get some other projects off the ground. Well, that that's more than understandable, and, and I'm sure I'm sure you can create a waiting list now and and just you know go from there and have no short of work. Uh, especially as more and more people discover, hey, wow, that's really cool. That exists. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, get my hands on it. Uh, so you know, I, I definitely I definitely hope any of our viewers that are watching this that say, hey, you know what, I really love. The virtual boy or i just want to get into the virtual boy i mean i think that's the biggest biggest appeal to planet vb itself uh is that it allows people to get into the system that have written it off as just a headache machine or yeah. a nintendo failed machine when it really isn't uh -huh. and unfortunately a lot of people don't give it a chance and you have now 
single-handedly pretty much. I know other people have done the work, but you're the one who put it together uh, and finally released it for people to, to purchase, uh, have opened the floodgates so that more developers can do two-player games or, or more maybe in the future. Uh, and really, yeah. you can see this, some really cool development coming up. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that was the intention of, okay, let's create this cable and, and uh, I hope it spurs some other games and, and stuff in it. And that stuff's coming. Um, like I mentioned, there's there's work being done in the background. Uh, timeline, I, I don't know, but it, it'll be exciting to see when that stuff comes out. Now, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, it might have been you uh, with the link cable. Mm -hmm. I saw something about going online with the link cable. Yeah, so that's the uh, main reason why I'm pausing the current wired cable. I guess I'll have to start calling it the wired cable. Um, I've already done some basic tests with a USB uh, to link port conversion. I can write data up to the virtual boy um, and read it down. Uh, I was actually able to play tic-tac-toe uh, using my computer and one virtual boy. So that link works. Um, I want to I need to do a schematic entry now and create the board and, and create that cable. So the idea right now is that um, you'll have one end of the link cable that you have with that carbon fiber uh, connector on the end. And inside that will be um, some brains to convert to USB and handle some of the message passing. Um, if, there's still some background work to be done. Um, I think my guess right now, based on what I've seen and some of the, the work I've done so far is that people on the same network, I don't think we'll have a problem playing. Um, people in the same town, probably not. Uh, maybe people cross state should be okay. It'll be interesting because the as you get farther and farther away, the latency is going to go up and up. Um, and I'm just not sure what latency Virtual Boy can tolerate in games. So I think I read somewhere East Coast to West Coast latency can be around 200 milliseconds. I'm guessing you might see some problems starting around there, but um, what I'm going to do is design the, the cable. Um, it's actually based around a uh, power, uh, power Nintendo Power Glove to USB adapter that I designed years ago. Um, and it, interestingly enough, it turns out it's not much different of a design. And then I'm going to send some out to a, uh, to a couple beta testers, and, and we're going to test it and see what flies. So. That that right there just blows my mind. I mean, the yeah. fact that we'll be able to I do hope virtual it works. online. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought of using the words virtual boy and online together in the same sentence would ever be a reality. And yeah. and, and my hope is that you can get it. And I know you talk about East Coast to West Coast. You, you're obviously West Coast and, yeah. and I'm East Coast. So yeah. I'd love to, to settle around a little, you know, hyper fighting or Mario Tennis or a, something. Yeah, we can do a test online live. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, that's awesome. I mean, just the fact that this is even a, in the realm of possibility uh, is phenomenal. And I, I, I'm excited, you know, I'm a Virtual Boy enthusiast, but I, I think this has to excite anybody who's interested in, in the industry just because of the possibilities that, that you can now take these things. I'm, I'm sure you remember the X band, um, you know, I'll take your Se Super Nintendo online, take your Sega Genesis online. Of uh -huh. course it was yeah. very good, but uh -huh. the, the fact that this is a reality, it's, it's, it's wow. Like, see, so I'm, I'm glad that that was you um, I saw. And uh, yeah. I'm glad you could talk about it because that that is a phenomenal project. Yeah, so that that's my uh, that that's why the pause in the current one. And um, again, the original development also was chasing that USB. And I'm not sure what happened along the way. Maybe I'll find out. Um, it seemed like the USB one kind of took precedence and they, or priority, and they kind of put the uh, wired version on back burner. Um, but you know, a lot of people who are buying link cables don't have anyone to actually play it with or don't have two virtual boys, but they're still buying. So hopefully a USB version um, can allow people, I mean, maybe it won't work from country to country or across coast to coast, but it certainly should work you know, within a city or from cities to cities, I hope so. We'll I hope see. so. The next See, month I'm, or so, I should know more. 
I'm in that boat too. I, I honestly only have one virtual boy. That's my original virtual boy. Mm. Um, and, and I, I have plans this weekend to have one of my, my, my best friend. That's the same one who, who had a virtual boy as a kid, like come over, our dreams are coming okay. true kind of deal. Nice. Uh, nice. Which, which is the very reason, you know, I've, I've got the, the two copies of Mary Dennis ready to go. Okay. Uh, so, so we can, we can play that. Um, and definitely, uh, you know, just, the idea of, of having that internet and you're right. It's one of those systems where it's not like a game boy, where even if you didn't have a second game boy, you can get one really cheap. Yeah. Uh, virtual boy is not that same way. You know, it's not one of those, Oh, I just have two of those lying around like so conveniently like, Oh yeah, I find them at garage sales all the time. Yeah. Uh, so it's really cool to get that aspect. And I think that will spur development because, I hope so. you know, and then, you know, you develop, like you said, uh, 3D Battlesnake and Tic-Tac-Toe, they are exclusive to multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have the capabilities, they're, they're worthless. I mean, it's just like having an online-only game for Xbox or, or PlayStation and not having PSN or, uh, or uh, Xbox Live Gold. Yeah. You're, you're not going to... You're not going to be able to play, or PS Plus, I mean. Uh, you're not going to be able to play, so it's a coaster. <laughs> That's yep. really all it is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for everything going on. And I do want to say thank you for, for doing this. Without you, yeah. I would not be holding this in my hands. I would not yeah, be going to play Mario Tennis. And it's all because of you. And I, for me personally, thank you. And I think I sp you know, speak for our, our readers and our watchers and, and uh, definitely the fellow Virtual Boy community. Uh, thank you for that because that is just truly awesome. Yeah, no problem. Glad, glad you like it. Hope you and your friend have fun this weekend. Oh, I, I'm planning on it. That, that's for sure. <laughs> like, it's going to be a weekend to remember. It's going to be going back to high school. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> get, what are you doing? I'm gaming virtual boy style, you know, party yeah, like it's 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. We're, we're, we're partying like it's 1995. Now, that, nice. that is awesome. You know, I, I hope... I hope that, uh, you know, you could talk more about the future stuff uh, soon, uh, you know, and I would definitely love to have you back and, and do another uh, talk with the, when you can talk more about the future stuff, because I think yeah, that's sure. exciting. I mean, I'm anticipating. I don't even know what it is other than the, the online. Uh, I'm anticipating what it is and definitely would would love to spread the word. Yeah, there's uh, we can definitely have some follow ups and it's there's some other stuff I'm also thinking about doing. Um, I'll just keep it at that for now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that teaser, that little, that little, and more, you know. Yeah. Um, so well, it, I, <laughs> I don't like to put the carrot out there until I know it can work. So uh, I, I understand, like understandable. Me. Yeah. So, so even even the online, <clears throat> it's not a hundred percent guaranteed yet, but no, not yet. It's in the works, uh, yeah. and there are more future projects. Um, for anybody that is interested in Kevin's projects, you can go to his webpage. Uh, that's meladsvrpage.com, uh, where he talks about all his projects. Uh, I'm sure there is a, a way they can go from the site to get on that wait list if they do want a link cable. Um, but as of the time of recording, you heard it here. He's taking a wonderful hiatus to work on other projects. Um, yep. but but there will be more from that. And uh, the other site, uh, not affiliated with Kevin or myself, but <clears throat> uh, for more information, I, you, you can check out planetvb.com. Uh, that is a, a great resource for the development of the homebrews and uh, really the development yeah. community for Virtual Boy. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I'd like to personally thank you for joining me today on this industry talk. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Thanks for having me. It's fun. And for all your other Nintendo news, everybody, please go to NintendoFuse.com. Till next time.